manifesting kingdom authority matthew chapter 8 we're we'll in our reading from verse 5 manifesting kingdom authority i want to teach you the dynamics of walking in power and authority you will be greatly blessed tonight in the name of jesus christ for those of us who have been frustrated in our christian experience because it seems that the power and the authority component has been missing we have the language we have the education the christian education but the spiritual wherewithal to defend the things that we say about god has not been captured in our lives i'm praying tonight for you in the name of jesus that that missing link that god will connect the dots for you in the name of jesus christ matthew chapter 8 please manifesting kingdom authority welcome to bbnet media join us for inspiring gospel messages on faith and relationships let's explore god's words and his love together for stronger connection with him new messages are uploaded regularly on this channel so please subscribe like comment and share and hit that notification bell to stay up to date god bless you want to take a study tonight from the life of jesus and the centurion verse 5 and when jesus entered into capernaum the bible says there came unto him a centurion beseeching him next verse saying lord my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented next verse and jesus said unto him i will come in honor to your request you are a centurion that will be the equivalent of a captain in the army i will come and heal him verse 8 the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only take note of that statement but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed verse 9 for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this man go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it hallelujah and when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Reading to 13. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Final verse. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Many believers are not able to walk in spiritual power or manifest kingdom authority in spite of the fact that the Bible is very clear as to the fact that among the many resources that were given to the believer to help us excel is the opportunity to walk in the authority and the power of the kingdom maybe i should start this way this kingdom is a kingdom of power are we together now the kingdom that we are part of and the kingdom we have been given is a kingdom that is in all way powerful when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, one of the additions, even though there are arguments there whether or not it was in the original manuscript, you would find it in many renditions. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the glory forever and ever. This is not just a kingdom of wisdom, this is a kingdom of power. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he did not just demonstrate the wisdom of God, he demonstrated power, he demonstrated authority over elemental forces, authority over the vicissitudes of life, the things that plagued the men that he met, and he miraculously turned people's situations around. In fact, it was on account of the display of his power that many people were drawn to him. For instance, his experience with the madman in Gadara the Bible tells us that that man was so impacted by the power 
of Jesus to deliver and restore him to his right mind. Two miracles happened there. One was the miracle of deliverance. The demons were casted out. Number two, the transformation that happened to the man. The Bible says when they came, they found the man seated and with his right mind. And he went and brought together a Decapolis. The ministry of power has helped many through the centuries to believe it is part of the tools that have been given by God to the saints through Christ to be able to help men to bring power to our witness. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, Great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all are we together in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power was not just the holy ghost and with power and he went about endued with that power and he was doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him so this is a kingdom of power and it is in the destiny of every believer please listen carefully it is in the destiny of every believer regardless the nature of your kingdom assignment the ministry of power walking in power and authority is not privy to a few apostles or prophets or teachers or pastors are we together it's not just for those who are called into the fivefold ministry as we know it is the heritage of the saints to walk in and to manifest true kingdom power let me repeat that again for your hearing and learning it is the heritage of the saints to walk in and manifest true kingdom power true kingdom authority there is a dimension of the life of god you cannot communicate to your world bankrupt of and outside of true spiritual power and true spiritual authority like you will be learning many possibilities in this kingdom in fact all possibilities in this kingdom are power dependent power dependent healing the sick power dependent casting out devils power dependent recreating possibilities over the lives of people power dependent my god turning circumstances around power dependent making advancement in life power dependent it is by you that i can run through a troop it is by my god that i can leap over a wall are we together advancing forcefully in spite of the arsenals of darkness it is god that teaches my fingers my hands to war my fingers to fight that means if you do not understand the dynamics of power and the dynamics of authority you will peg your life and limit yourself spiritually now for the average believer in our world the moment we talk of power the only thing that personifies power is falling down so the average believer's understanding of power is the ability to whether through speaking or through words once another believer can fall under the anointing we sign that register and we believe that we are powerful power is beyond falling down is beyond shouting under the anointing are we together now it is my prayer and intent after tonight's teaching that you will walk in power that is recognized both in the spirit and in the physical realm in the name of Jesus Christ what was missing in the experience of the sons of Sceva and the one who was plagued with demons was power not knowledge they said in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches that that communication was correct but the power components to back them was not there and the demon said Jesus I know words with power Paul I know words with power but who are you words alone and the demons descended on them it is a risk to sojourn the earth proposing many things even in the presence of demon spirits in the presence of men now believers make all kinds of arrogant statements i can hold a charm and nothing happens to me you are right if there is power but if power is missing and you make certain ambitious statements you may spend the rest of your short-lived life paying the price are we together 
the ministry of power is not for Pentecostals no the ministry of power is not for charismatic people it is a vital component it is a principal survival strategy among the many things that was the green light for the church to be birthed to be born and for the ministry of witness to begin was the arrival of power before Jesus died he had already taught them they were not bankrupt of mentorship but he said tarry what you need is not more information tarry if you carry this information alone you will be disappointed tarry until ye be endued with power from on high the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 now when the day of Pentecost was fully come they says they were gathered together in one accord in one place suddenly the ministry of power my God it says there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind fulfilling Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but ye shall receive power someone say power the devil has not heard you say power you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and the power shall make you witnesses witnesses it takes more than education and enlightenment to be witnesses you shall receive power TL Osborne had knowledge but he lacked power he went to India and was viciously disappointed he returned back not for more education but stayed with God until power came I watched a few of their videos preparing for this meeting and it challenged me so much. I was listening to Maurice Sarul of Blessed Memory and this man, he was sharing how the, his exploits as he sojourned from city to city, showing the ministry of power. We have downplayed power to our detriment is the reason why the gospel is seemingly powerless. We say a lot of things that are right. Our problem is not error. Our problem is there is no backing to what we are saying. There is no wholeness to the gospel. We say God can do things that are never done in our lives. The reason why we patronize products is because there is an element of performance when the marketers tell you that the gadget will work this way when you buy it it works and they never have to tell you to tell another person about it I've told you the reason why evangelism is difficult is because we are largely missing the power component and the truth is that because our ignorance is laced with a lot of pride it is difficult to even settle down and start a constructive journey towards accessing genuine power it's difficult for the average believer to admit that we are far short of God's expectation his definition of power read your Bible and see what men did in the presence of genuine power genuine power hallelujah and if we must manifest the authority that comes with this kingdom it is important for us to know and appreciate number one that this is a kingdom of power this is not just a kingdom of light this is not just the kingdom of knowledge and wisdom but it's a kingdom of power and authority the first thing God gave man Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 the Bible says God gave man dominion dominion 26 to 28 he says have dominion have dominion don't speak dominion he did not just say understand dominion have dominion have dominion have dominion are we learning this is a kingdom of power we have been given power we have been given authority in this kingdom Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 Jesus was speaking we'll make reference to that scripture a little later and we'll read the amplified version but for now let's make do with KJV it says behold I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you Psalm 8 4 to 6 Psalm 8 4 to 6 it says what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 for thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and has crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 it says thou made him to have dominion say dominion please shout it like you believe say dominion dominion over the works of thy hands please keep that scripture there it says thou has put all things under his feet you travel with me from this to Hebrews chapter 2 reading 5 to 8 same scripture but just to add flesh to it 
it says for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak verse 6 it says for in a certain place making reference to Psalm 8 he testified saying keep the scripture please what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him verse 7 thou hast made him a little lower than the angels thou hast crowned him with glory and honor he said you did set him over the works of your hands i like verse 8 it says that thou hast put all things under his feet for in for in that he put all things under his feet he left nothing he left nothing that was not under his feet. But the tragedy is now, in experience, we do not yet see all things under his feet. Whether you walk in the reality of kingdom authority or not, does not change this verdict. That all things in God's mind, man is the zenith of his creation. An adumbration of man's authority is seen in the story of Joseph at his point of exaltation. Pharaoh beat his chest and said, I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that you will be higher than me. But in matters of governance and operation over Egypt, everything will revolve at thy word, dominion. Seth was not the most powerful. He was not even the healthiest. We're talking of a slave who just came out hours ago from the prison. But the moment it was conferred upon him, Egypt was at the mercy of the power of, of Joseph. He could do and undo with anyone, including Potiphar, who sent him to Egypt, sent him to prison. Let me tell you, believers, if we want to see the harvest like never before, if we want to rise to become manifestations of the light and the glory of God, it is important for us to not only embrace, but understand the dynamics of spiritual power. Now, let me say this. There are a group of believers who have downplayed and trivialized the necessity for power and authority in the excelling of the believer and in the advancement of the kingdom. That is a big mistake. And then there are those who are unnecessarily obsessed with the idea of power without understanding the dynamics of walking in the experience of it. They have believers on one hand who out of frustration most likely for secretly trying various formulas to not. They have concluded that power is unnecessary and usually they lean along the angle of wisdom. Then there are those who are obsessed. If you talk and you have not mentioned power, they won't listen to you. And yet in all of that communication, the testament of walking in authority is not captured in their Christian experience. It is not enough that we understand that this is a kingdom of power and authority it is not enough for us to know that it's our heritage in christ we must be able to understand the dynamics and i want to do a little work on your mind right now and please cooperate with me and the holy spirit as we journey with you to redefine a few things i want to start tonight by doing a few redefinitions and i've done this before but i need it to connect to the other things that i'll be telling you let's define a few things what is power please write what is power it is important for you to understand what power is when we talk about power in the kingdom what exactly is power power is the capacity to influence outcomes please write it down the capacity to influence outcomes is called power. We say that you will have power to the degree to which you have the wherewithal to influence outcomes. If you lack the wherewithal to influence outcomes, all kinds of outcomes, spiritual outcomes, economic outcomes, sociological outcomes, every time you see a man in the spirit or even in the secular sustaining wherewithal to influence outcomes that man is a powerful man so power is the capacity to influence outcomes can i give you another definition i define power furthermore as the force that compels compliance the force that compels compliance i like this because the fallen system is a world of disobedience. All unclean spirits are disobedient spirits. In fact, the signature operation of unclean spirits are disobedience. Is, uh, is disobedience. 
Are we together now? Yes. Disobedience is the signature of all unclean spirits. And so every time God speaks or every time you speak in the name of the Lord, do not expect compliance until they are brought by force. Satan will not leave your family just because the word of God says he should. Satan will not leave your finances, leave your life, leave your destiny. It takes more than a good heart, a well-intentioned personality to be free. The Bible says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. It says it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies shall submit themselves to you. The force that compels compliance. The force that compels compliance. There are many things that God said should not happen to your life. Satan heard it. Unclean spirits heard it and they still stubbornly hold on to whatever keeps you a victim. If you do not know how to bail yourself out by the application of genuine spiritual power, you may remain a victim forever. It takes power to grow. It takes power to retain anything you have been given. Retainership is not a product of wisdom. Acquisition is a product of wisdom. But retainership is a product of power. Are we together now? Power is the capacity to influence outcomes. It is the force that compels compliance. Let me tell you the truth. This world and the gates that have been closed around the systems of this world are not about to be open for you except and unless you come with power. Except and unless you come with power. For instance, ministry will never work until power is part of the equation. Your home, your family will never work until power is part of the equation. Longevity in health and joy will never work. Promotion will never work. Advancement will never work. Are we together now? Nothing works in this kingdom until power keeps it in place. Look at me. Think of what happens in your house and think of what happens to your produce in the fridge when there's no light as we call it imagine that there's no light and you don't have any way of outsourcing power you know how inconveniencing it is to stay two three days no electricity most likely precious things that you've spent money buying putting in the fridge or the deep freezer will begin to rot is that look the amount of wastage that happens in a house when you have 72 hours without power Think of what happens to a believer from January till June. No power. I can tell you most likely the things you have received would have left you or would have lost their value. Power retains. There are things that can stay in the fridge for up to one month because there's constant electricity. Ministry remains. It took power to keep it. If your family is still gathered together, it takes power to keep it. Are we together? Even your name, the reputation God has given you, it takes power. 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 Many of us have lost our bishopric because we ignored the ministry of power and we allow things to slip over our hands. Satan switched off the switch in your house and destiny and you allowed the things began to decay. The things that should carry value and glory were missing because there's, there's no power and there's no authority. I don't know one person who demons left in peace without engaging power. I don't know one person whose destiny just happened like that without power. It took power for Jesus to leave Hades back to the earth, power from the earth to the throne. Elevation is a product of power. There are many people in ministry who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many people in business who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many leaders who do not understand power because we have produced, we have turned power to become a charismatic issue an issue for men of God or our concept of power has just been deliverance and falling down and maybe healing oh no no power is beyond that the force that compels compliance the power to manipulate outcomes you manipulate and check it with the word they are not the same you manipulate again until it becomes consistent with that which is written I believe what I'm teaching you 
you are in for a real journey this night. We are still defining terminology. Power is the capacity to influence outcomes. Every prayer request is an outcome desired whose is, is an outcome that is a representation of your expectation. Something you want to change is what you document as a prayer request and it only answers to power. The subject of power was not supposed to be an issue that we talk about. The reason why the subject of power has become an irritation in the body of Christ is because it has become a noisy expression. A noisy expression of zeal without a testament validating it. We talk a lot about power. We teach series about power with all due respect. We write books about power. So many things power can do. Stories about power that we never see brought to the scene is the reason why the world does not take us seriously. I tell you the truth, where the carcasses are, in truth, there the eagles will gather. Are we together? Let's define authority. Authority is the right or the legitimacy to use power. The legitimacy to administer power. The legitimacy to administer power. Please lend me your attention. It's called authority. The legitimacy to administer power. Authority is also the right to represent, to stand instead for. Are we together? When we talk about authority, we talk about the legitimacy, the right to use power. It takes authority to not make your use of power illegal. I will always give this example. Please look at me. Imagine with me that there are two people standing here, one by my left and the other by my right. Let's call the person by my left an armed robber or a terrorist. Are we together? Having a gun, an AK-47. And then someone standing here, a military man, licensed by the Nigerian military. Both of them are holding guns. One has power because with that gun, he can produce a real effect on your body, like death or injury. The effect is not fake. If he shoots that gun, the gun does not care whether it's a criminal shooting it. It will kill you, except you have something else greater than the gun. Are we together now? But for the military man, why will another person shoot? Both of them will shoot, but one will go to bed in peace, commended by the nation. Another one will go to jail. What is the difference? Both of them have power, but only one has authority. Are you listening now? You have to understand this. Just because you have power does not authorize you to use it. Oh, there is a judicial system in the spirit that vets authority. You ask the sons of Skiva. Many believers are conscious of power, but very few people understand the dynamics of authority. And you will be learning in the course of this teaching that you need both power and authority to walk in dominion. Dominion is a resultant effect of walking in power and authority power and authority if you have power alone then you are in the class of satan are we together now authority is a legitimacy to use power now let me say a few things about authority listen carefully please authority always comes with a predefined jurisdiction i need you to hear this the moment you mention authority you have to mention two other things. Number one, jurisdiction. Number two, supervision. I need you to hear this. It is impossible to have authority without these two components. Genuine authority must go hand in hand with these two things. Everywhere you see authority, you must see jurisdiction and a system to supervise the usage of it. When you say, I have authority, the first thing we need to know is over what and over where and the second thing we need to know is what administrative system was put in place to check balance you in case you become a rebel are you seeing why many believers do not work in authority listen carefully authority is always jurisdictional please look at me a official name for nigeria is the federal republic of nigeria now you may not understand that that means that a a predefined landmass, are we together? Was a mat wherein 
the governmental jurisdiction of Nigeria functions, even if you take one step out of that jurisdiction, the laws of Nigeria does not apply to you again. There are nations where a rope is literally what separates one nation from another. But the consequences of escaping that rope by mistake can cost you the remaining part of your life. Are we together? A rope, literally. If you move that rope this way, you are in another nation with another jurisdiction and another set of laws. Jurisdiction is an important component to working in dominion. You will be learning, I have taught you here, but I will repeat it again, that the believer does not have power everywhere and it does not have power over everything. It is important for you to know what God gave you authority over and how far that authority is so that you would not find yourself engaging and applying power where your jurisdiction does not hold. Let me give you an instance. If you recall when I was teaching you, no believer has power in the throne room. You cannot command anything in the throne room to respond to you. Not the throne, not God, not elders, none of those. There is no record in scripture of anybody issuing a command in the throne room and making things happen. There is a predefined jurisdiction. Are we together? What is jurisdiction? This will be my third definition and then we'll begin to build a few things. Jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal. Jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal. You have to be a military man or you have to be a judicial person or to really understand these definitions, the concept of jurisdiction. There are times, at least we know in Nigeria, where a particular issue cannot be dealt with within a court and they say it is beyond their jurisdiction. Am I right on that? That means take this issue out of this court. Everyone there is qualified, but they know that they cannot administer, they cannot deal with that issue because it is beyond their jurisdictions. We have different kinds of courts. They are all courts. I'm not learned enough, forgive me, to give you all of the structures intelligently. I won't even attempt it, but I can attempt the ones I know. I know that there's high court. I know that there's supreme court. I know that there's appeal court. I think I tried. What is the difference between a customary court and a supreme court? Jurisdiction and the authority. As far as every nation is concerned, once the supreme court gives a verdict, whether it is right or not, within that predefined jurisdiction, the matter has ended. If you go to the does appeal court, no, I don't you see why it's good to be. Appeal court does not have any power again, I think. It's done. The Supreme Court declares and it is over. No matter how angry you are, you have to wait for maybe rapture, God comes and whatever it is. But as far as the earth is concerned, now listen, as interesting as what I'm saying is, it has an implication to your life. But did you know that even the Supreme Court itself from a from a transcontinental standpoint also submits to other judicial systems am i right on that that is what makes the supreme court valid there is no authority anywhere without a system of supervision higher than it it will not work what makes any system have authority is the ability to acknowledge another supervisory body that regulates it i made a statement some time ago and it disturbed many people within the body of Christ. I said, God does not have authority. It is true. The reason why God does not have authority is because of everything I just told you. For authority to happen to a man, there must be jurisdiction. And number two, there must be another system higher than you to supervise it. God cannot have authority, not as God. He only manifested authority when he became a man and that's because he submitted to the authority of the father are we together listen this is the reason why god can give men authority the bible says he sought for a, to find out if there was any higher than him so that he would swear by and not finding any he had to swear by himself it's in your bible he was willing to submit if he found one higher than him 
but he did not find any. The meaning of that is when God speaks to you, it's important to understand who just spoke. Did you hear what I said? Any other person can speak, but when God speaks, the righteous judge, when he hits that hammer and says, go forward, listen, if you don't know this, you will never see any sick bed person healed in your life. When you stand before the sick, when you stand before the oppressed, the moment you think just of your fasting and prayer alone, nobody will rise up from there. There has to be the consciousness. There is a parliament in heaven. God, the one who is speaking to you is not supervised by another government. No. He has absolute power. Absolute. He cannot have authority. If God has authority, it means there is a place where his power cannot work. If he has authority, it means there must be someone higher than him that he too should worship. When Jesus became a man, there was no manifestation of power until he acknowledged the government of heaven. As my father has sent me, I didn't just go, I was sent. I had to stay until I was sent. You will understand the story between Jesus and the centurion now. Jesus is on his way and he meets this man, this military man. There's a reason why the story is with a military man because they are best to understand these terms. So man says, please, my servant, other synoptic accounts will tell you his daughter, Jarius's daughter and the rest. But in this case, he says, my servant is sick unto death. And Jesus said, I respect you. I will come to your house. And he says, no, sir, you are a busy man. But there is something I know by my training. I am a man under, I didn't become a captain for nothing. There, I am under authority and being under authority has given me the license to say unto one, go and he must go. If he disobeys, he did not disobey me. The authority higher than me has to answer for me. I say to one, go and he goes. I say to one, come and he comes. I say to one, do this and he does it. And Jesus said, you know what he was saying? Jesus, you too, you are a man under authority. I've watched the miracles that come from you. And yet you say you are a man. If you said you were God, I will not ask you, but that you are a man. This formula also applies to you. Speak the word only. That means the government that backs you does not have authority. They can reach my house from anywhere. And Jesus said, who taught you this? have not found this orientation no not in Israel listen to me I've studied my Bible a bit I don't claim to know everything I've studied custodians of genuine power not talkers of it men who have demonstrated power that and their demonstration has had equal value in any nation it was Maurice Rulo who was teaching and he said he went to a a prison place where they confine mad people I think it was in Haiti as soon as he stepped there the spirits were shouting through the people shouting his name Maurice Arulo these were people who were not learned because power stepped in let me tell you there is a signature upon men who genuinely carry power you can't politicize it in the spirit I tell you the truth if if your life does not carry power the realm of the spirit knows those who carry power this is not just about speaking gibberish and Pentecostal language power power the Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of the Apostles and they were taken to those who were sick the handkerchiefs did not speak in tongues the handkerchiefs did not fast they did not pray but they came in contact with men who carried power and understood authority I have never seen a generation that is a combination of great advancement in the spirit but commanding such pathetic disrespect from the realm of the spirit are we together there were men who walked upon the earth and circumstances would not dare disrespect their commands some of them were not educated but my god they carried power they carried genuine power the ratio of the things we say versus the, the amount of them that happen is so small. We need to go back to the secret place and ask ourselves, something must be missing. Are we learning now? The Bible speaks about Samuel, a man whose word did not fall to the ground. 
there are very few people in our generation who can ever have that testimony that they speak and there is performance to their speakings backed up by power tonight's teaching is to challenge you jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed it means even the military man as much as he's licensed to shoot he cannot shoot anyone anywhere do you know even in the times of war there's what they call rules of engagement am i right on that military people sometimes the rules is that you don't kill women and children look for the terrorists alone it is the reason why when they are fighting wars at an international scale when they hit civilians they charge the nations and the people because they violated the rules of engagement most believers do not know what they have power over our ignorance is expressed in our prayers we pray and command everything including things that are beyond our jurisdiction and the realm of the spirit frowns at our ignorance our results follow same it's important for us to understand the dynamics of power i want to show you something that will make you a believer with authority that powers in the realm of the spirit will know you don't need to announce that you have entered a city you step into that city from one position and things will begin to leave a child that is missing somewhere you make one declaration you step into a city and like the like the donkey of saul that child returns home because the force is holding him cannot stand again hallelujah i remember it was said about the man charles g finney that one time he prayed so much when he entered a city people began to see mighty manifestations happen and they said what is happening they didn't even know and somebody announced that charles g finney is in town now he was having a crusade in a particular location but there was a a jurisdictional reaction because when you enter a place that is within your jurisdiction everything should answer there are we together now everything should answer now if the president of this nation comes here in his capacity as the president how many of you know that there are other people who must come with him in that capacity that is how it is in the spirit when you have this consciousness of authority and power when you step in you know that you are never alone there is an angelic backing it's true power the force that compels compliance authority the rights, the legitimacy to administer power and jurisdiction. And I told you that authority goes hand in hand with jurisdiction and a system that supervises it. It is the reason why God does not have authority. There is no jurisdiction that his power cannot reach. In fact, he is the creator of all things. And then there is no government higher than him that supervises him that means you cannot say God is just or unjust there is no basis for it if God decides to lift a man you don't say God is unjust based on what he is God there is no reference that supervises him I will tell you why the Word of God is powerful that same God now submitted himself to the Word and says listen I can do all things I can do anything and I am God however I have limited my operation to the jurisdiction that scripture allows the bible says he exalts his word more than his reputation more than his name that means as powerful as god is he still failed to keep his power within check using the word that means any dimension the word does not allow god's power cannot go beyond the way to get God's power to move is not to ask him to move is to show the jurisdiction based on scripture if the word of God if scripture cannot channel God's power to your body God's power cannot reach there because it is the word that defines and allocates where the power of God will find expression anywhere the word of God goes to it becomes legitimate for God's power to be there hallelujah Thank you for watching BBNet Media. May the inspiration and knowledge you have received today stay with you throughout your week. If you've been blessed by this message, please share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all our latest inspirational contents. Join us next time for a more uplifting messages on faith and relationships. Until then, keep working in faith and remember that God is always with you.
guiding and directing your path. Thank you once again for watching. God bless you. Retreat.